everyone, Gecko here. I'm back at the Hoylake Lifeboat Station with the RNLI to learn all about their amazing hovercraft. I can't wait to meet the crew and get stuck in. A hovercraft is an amphibious vehicle. Do you know what amphibious means? It means something that can go on land and in the water. This is Chris, and he's today's hovercraft commander. Great to see you, Gecko. Coming into our lifeboat station. It's amazing inside this lifeboat station. There's so many huge vehicles that are all designed to rescue people who are in trouble at sea. Gecko, would you like to join us on a hovercraft training exercise? Oh yes please Chris. To stay safe, warm and dry, the crew have to wear this safety gear. The helmet is actually called a Gecko helmet. Can you believe it? It's a real team effort to launch the hovercraft. Push team! The hovercraft is very heavy, so a big tractor is used to tow it safely down to the beach. Then, it's all hands on deck to unclip the hovercraft from the trailer and pump up the inflatable sponsons which help the hovercraft float on water. Then the pilot uses the engine to glide back onto the beach. Hooray! Wow! Look at all of these levers and switches. It all looks very complicated. Nick is the pilot and it's his job to fly the hovercraft. To start the engine, Nick turns this key. We can't see them, but underneath the hovercraft are two fans, which blow air downwards. This fills the skirt with air, making the hovercraft lift off the ground. Wowzers trousers! The big fans at the back are called the thrust propellers, and these push the hovercraft forwards. When Nick moves this lever, the rudders at the back move. It's these rudders that steer the hovercraft left and right. Nick makes the fans move faster, and the hovercraft glides forwards. Woo, that is amazing! As commander of the hovercraft, it's Chris's job to check all around and give Nick instructions to help him fly the hovercraft safely. It's so fast and it's so noisy. Now I know why these gecko helmets have microphones and headphones built into them. They allow us to talk and listen to each other. It feels like we're floating across the sand. And just like that, we're on the water. This hovercraft is amazing. It's now time for me to hop off and let the crew do their training exercise. The RNLI is a charity set up to save lives at sea. And these training exercises help the team here get ready for real life search and rescue missions. So to be as prepared as they possibly can be, the team practice, practice, practice. Today they're practicing 
how to rescue someone who is stuck in the mud. Playing in deep mud near the sea can be very dangerous, especially if the tide is coming in. Now that's what I call getting stuck in. Tides are the rise and fall of the levels of the sea. This is something that's happening all of the time, which means that if you're stuck in the mud on the beach, the tide might come in and surround you with water. It's very important to respect the water and make sure you check when the tide is coming in to make sure you're safe when you're at the beach. Well done team! another successful training mission. Oh dear, it looks like the mechanicals haven't checked the tide times and they're stranded on this island. It looks like there's a storm coming too. Luckily, the hovercraft is the perfect rescue vehicle. Jump aboard mechanicals. the hovercraft is. All that whizzing about in the sand and sea is dirty work. Every time the hovercraft is called into action, the RNLI crew take great care to make sure it's cleaned up and ready to be used again. Here in the nice dry lifeboat station is the perfect place for the hovercraft to sleep for the night. Thank you very much to the fabulous crew from RNLI Hoylake for allowing me to spend the day with them and their amazing hovercraft. I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up, so these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and 
growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons – spring, summer, autumn and winter – to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back, forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away loosening all of that grease and grime. 
If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle. There's three rollers in total, two that clean each side of the truck and one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away and the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job team! Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus, that's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now. Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Here we are back at the bus depot. I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine. And these screens are connected to cameras so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes 
to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall? Look at that, clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here, to the Arriva Maintenance Garage, where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. And here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I'm meeting up with my old friend Mr T and his amazing ice cream truck today. I've asked for his help to organise a surprise for one of my friends. Here he comes now! Hi, Gecko! Hello Mr T! Thanks for coming! So what's the plan? Well, I think it's about time that my friend Vicky the Ice Cream Van had a treat of her own. She's always so busy serving yummy ice cream treats to other people that I thought it was about time someone made a treat for her. What a lovely idea, Gecko. Let's make Vicky the biggest, best ice cream ever. Hop in. So, Gecko. We've got lots of amazing ice cream in my machine at the back. But to make it really special, I think we need to find some treats to put on top. Great idea, Mr T. Sounds like we've got ourselves a treasure hunt. Hey look, Mr T. What's that over there? I think I see a treat box. Open it, Mr T. Let's see what's inside. It's two giant bags of sweets. These are going to add lots of colour to Vicky's ice cream treat. And they'll be nice and chewy too. Amazing! Let's see what else we can find. Look, Gecko, there's another treat box here. Send it down the slide, Mr T. I wonder what it is. Hooray! It's a big box of waffles. Should we get back in the van and find some more treat boxes? So, Gecko, it's time to put some music on. See if my old friends at the RNLI have seen anything. Oh, hi, Andy. You haven't seen any treat boxes round here, have you? 
as a matter of fact, they have. Have a look on deck. Hey, Gecko, I found one. Let's see what's inside. It's a huge bottle of my favourite sauce. Good job, Mr T. I wonder if there's any treasure around that pirate ship over there. Let's take a look in the treasure chest. We've found treasure. It's another treat box. Wow, it's a bag of giant marshmallows. Wow, Vicky will love them. Hey look, we're just passing Claremont Farm. Let's pop in and see if Farmer Andy has seen any treat boxes. Hey Gecko, good to see you again. You looking for a treat box? Yes, we are. Go and have a look in my tractor. We found another treat box. <gasps> it's a giant chocolate bar. Wow, that's the biggest chocolate bar I've ever seen. I think that should be enough treats to make Vicky the most amazing ice cream creation. Let's go make it. To make the perfect ice cream creation for Vicky, we need the perfect ice cream cone. And I've got just the thing. That is brilliant. Let's get cracking. And now I think there should be something healthy in there as well. Remember them strawberries that we got from Claremont Farm? And finally, some chocolate. Hurry, Mr. T. I think she's on her way. Hello, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Me and my friend Mr T have a big surprise for you. I decided that it's about time someone made a treat just for you. After all of the amazing treats you always give to other people. So we decided to make you Vicky's treasured treat served in the perfect ice cream cone. Here you go, Vicky, just to say thank you. Did you see how happy that ice cream surprise made her, Gecko? I've never seen her so happy. That's given me an idea. Maybe we should go and give some treats to more people who deserve them.
So who's ready for some free ice creams, guys? Now let's serve the amazing crew of the RNLI lifeboat. Well, guys, you lot deserve a free ice cream, so there you go. There's plenty of yummy ice cream for the amazing volunteers who work in charity shops. They raise money for good causes. There we are, Paula. Thank you very much for being such a lovely person to the community. Oh, you enjoy oh, that, my love, and there's one there for your colleague as well, lovely. yeah? Okay then. Oh, so no problem much. at all. Enjoy. Farmer Andy works really hard down on the farm. It's time he had a break and some yummy ice cream, all topped off with his special strawberries. Nothing puts a smile on people's faces quite like an ice cream gecko. I've loved spreading a bit of joy to Vicky and all of these amazing people. Thanks to Mr T for making all of his wonderful creations. Have a think if you could do something special to put a smile on someone's face today. I think you can really brighten up somebody's day. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye. If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.